Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sky Knight. Uh, so about a month ago, I decided to uh, check out OpenSUSE Tumbleweed in a virtual machine and, you know, make a video on it. Uh, I thought the video was trash. Uh, it unfortunately got a fair amount of traction, uh, as far as my videos go anyway. Uh, and it, it's just embarrassing that that many people saw it. Um, I guess the video itself is nothing more than just a timed video to see you know, how long it would take to... Uh, to go from a server installation uh, to my preferred desktop, I uh, am you know, utilizing uh, BSPWM, SSH, KD, Rofi, and uh, Polybar. Uh, my main complaint at the time was that uh, the sheer amount of time that it took to install. I used the uh, network uh, ISO image on there, so uh, it had to download everything uh, you know, at installation time. Uh, so I thought for a second that it was just a slow download, but that's not the case so we'll get into that later because i i know it's not the case because i have a, a gigabit fiber connection but i'll get more on that later uh so ever since that video i actually uh even even after i said that i didn't like it i installed it on my main machine i've been running it uh you know as my daily driver for the past month or so something something like that uh and I've grown to like it. Uh, I guess this is this is essentially going to be a somewhat long-term review on OpenSUSE. Uh, so OpenSUSE has uh, a few quirks, uh, unique features, oddities, whatever, whatever you want to call them. Uh, that I haven't seen in other distributions before. Uh, building your own environment from the ground up, from you know, essentially from a server uh, install into a you know a full-fledged desktop, you kind of learn a little bit about the system that you're actually creating it on. One of the things that I've noticed is there's out-of-the-box aliases for LS. So I know this isn't the only distribution that just has an alias for things like, you know, LS-L uh, to be shortened to just LL. I'm pretty sure uh, Ubuntu actually has that out-of-the-box as well. But this is the first time that I've I've noticed that a distribution uh, has like LA be for, uh, you know, list all. LA or LS-LA is uh, essentially what that is shorthand for, which that's one of my aliases that I make all the time, so it's really kind of neat that uh, they had that uh, just, you know, out of the box. So there's a bin folder in the home directory, or in the user's home directory, which I've never seen that before. Uh, I, th I thought it was kind of weird. Then I started putting scripts into it, and I'm like, oh, wait a second, no, this is actually kind of handy. You know, normally you would do, the, you know, dot local slash bin or you know user share local bin for uh system-wide ones but no just having a bin folder in your user directory is super handy i don't have to it's just right there when i open up a, a terminal you know i don't have to go into dot local to get it to it it's it's super nice uh, i use it way more than i thought that i would uh it's probably going to be something that i bring with me you know the next time that I distro hop, I'm going to add a bin folder to my home directory. One of the weirder things that I found out was that you cannot run a program or a graphical program as sudo by default. I, I did not understand this for the longest time. I thought that I was doing something wrong with my installation, so I ended up reinstalling, you know, two or three times before I, I finally found a solution. So apparently, it's this is just this is intended. Um, you, you just have to do some things to enable uh, the root user to be able to do it. Uh, first, you need to edit the sudoers file. Uh, there is a line in there, env underscore keep, uh, and there's a long string. You want to add display and x authority to this string. Uh, so yep, yeah, and save that. Uh, next, if you don't have the application called xhost, x-h-o-s-t installed, uh, you're going to want to install that. Uh, then you just need to run a command, xhost plus local colon root. And after that, it just works. Every, everything just works again. Uh, you can run any GUI application, you know, with sudo from the command line like you would on just about any other distribution, you know. You'd need it for, you know, time shift or uh, NVIDIA settings, you know, th things like that. 
So the base server install comes with a functional pull kit. So this was a surprise. I, not once have I ever had, you know, like the out of the box pull kit, you know, just work uh, from a, a server installation that I built up. Not on Debian, not on Fedora, not on Arch. Uh, I was, I mean, I was quite surprised the first time that I, you know, entered a command that required sudo to do, and it prompted me in the terminal to enter the sudo password. I was blown, like, that's how I always imagined it should have worked, but it it never did for whatever reason. I don't know if I set it up wrongly in, 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 in any of the other distributions, but this is the only time that it's ever happened. I mean, I still added a uh, uh, the KDE pull kit agent just so I'd have a, a GUI pop up instead of, you know, spawning a terminal whenever it uh, wants a elevated password prompts but it, it was it was really cool i i always assumed that that's just how it was intended to work and it just never worked on any other distribution so the system d user service directory it is not in dot config slash system d so i'm not 100 percent sure that i put the time in enough to actually say that this doesn't work however it doesn't work immediately out of the box like I'm used to, or like I have been using. Uh, I recently discovered on uh, Debian on my last stint with them that uh, you could put your uh, user services and user timer files in uh, dot config slash systemd slash user, and it just knows that they're in there and it just works that way. So yeah, I was, I was a little disappointed to see that it doesn't work that way in OpenSUSE. Not a huge deal. You can just throw them in, you know, slash EDC slash systemd slash user, but then you require sudo to edit or create the files. And half the time I forget to, you know, put sudo before the commands. Then I have to go back and reference another video that I did recently about uh, what, hap what to do if you forget to, uh, you know, put sudo before your uh, vim command. Yes. So Yast is something that I heard all of these great things about. You know, it's a GUI that can do, you know, almost anything that you need for maintaining your system. You know, setting up users, creating virtual machines, uh, adding software repositories, changing bootloader parameters, setting up a firewall. It's just about anything that you would want to do on your system, you can do graphically. The thing is, I don't like it. It, it just, I, I don't. It doesn't feel right using a GUI to do something that I can do in less time, you know, in the terminal. I realize this certainly isn't going to be the case for everybody, uh, but I tend to live in the terminal when I'm in Linux. I just kind of always have. I kind of feel like Bane, right? I was born into the terminal. I really did start with Arch, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, there's certainly things that are more convenient to do in Yes, like uh, adding software repositories is easy to do, especially if you know, you're adding the NVIDIA or the Pac-Man ones, as those are just under the uh, community uh, repositories that you can just add. Uh, searching for packages in Yes is also just so much better than doing it in Zipper. Uh, so if you have several applications that you need to have installed and you're not 100% sure on what the names are, but you're, you kind of have an idea, uh, Yes is going to be your friend. Uh, other than, you know, the few things that I mentioned for, you know, that I liked, uh, I'm sure I'm missing a few. It's, it's been a long month, but uh, I'd, I'd really rather just stick with the terminal. So on to the negatives. Um, from how my initial run went with the uh, virtual machine installation, I thought there were going to be more than this. Um, but I was, I was pleasantly surprised. So, yes. I'm going to ruffle some feathers here, but I'm going to have to put this in the negative. Um, not because I think yes is garbage or that it doesn't work or anything like that, but the sheer amount of praise that it gets from... Almost anyone that speaks about OpenSUSE, you know, I was expecting something groundbreaking, um, and my ground is definitely not broken. I mean, granted, perhaps if I were, you know, a, an actual sysadmin on this, then I was working with, you know, a network of computers and a whole bunch of users, I would probably find it infinitely more useful, but I'm not. I'm just 
you know, some geek that gets a rush by opening up the terminal and uh, firing off some commands. Uh, I guess the best way I could describe it is it's it's similar to if your all of your friends went and saw a movie that they really liked, uh, and they were talking to you about it, building it up and building it up until you finally go and see it, and then you're sitting in the theater and you're thinking, that was it? So, it's cool. It's It didn't live up to the hype that I think it gets. I mean, but what can you do about that? Uh, so the biggest, most annoying thing that I've encountered in OpenSUSE is installing or updating packages. No, Zipper isn't hard to use, and Yast will work just fine. But how in the hell does it take so long to gather repository metadata? Just the process of you know waiting for Zipper to get the repository metadata and then rebuilding the repository, you know, the first step in any install or update command can take far more time than actually downloading or installing the goddamn application. I don't, I mean, God forbid you're trying to, you know, tab complete a zipper install command and your repositories are out of date. So your terminal just hangs while you're pressing tab and you think you just locked up the system, but no, it's just zipper has to go through that stupid process of pulling down the metadata and I, it immediately kills any flow that you may have had going into it. And I'm not the only one with this problem. There's dozens of these posts uh, all over the internet, and none of them have an answer other than, you know, oh, that sucks, it works for me, or, oh, it'll work sometimes, just try again later. Or, you know, one of my favorites is, uh, well, why are you installing or updating things so often? What? So I like OpenSUSE. Like, I like it enough that I intended running it as my daily driver for the immediate future, or, you know, at least until I get bored and distro hop again. So I've decided to go away from uh, Tumbleweed, and I've actually hopped onto uh, OpenSUSE Leap 15.4, uh, I think it is right now. I could still get all the new newest packages that I could ever want with, you know, Flatpak or Snap or, you know, the Nix package manager or hell, even... Uh, DistroBox would work just fine for anything that I would need to do, but I kind of like the idea of being on an LTS kernel that doesn't really get updates other than security ones, and then, you know, my applications that I actually care about having updated, I can just, you know, flat pack update. That seems cool to me. But yeah, I'm going to be sticking on uh, OpenSUSE, specifically Leap, uh, for the time being. Uh, I mean, if being stuck on the LTS kernel is... A hindrance. Um, it's fairly easy to just upgrade to tumbleweed, uh, but I don't. I don't foresee that happening. But who knows? And hell, I might get bored by the end of next month and hop on to something completely different. All right. Well, that is all of my thoughts about uh, OpenSUSE, uh, tumbleweed, and Leap. Um, uh, thank you all for hanging out with me. Have a good night.